Hello everyone, I'm Sam Willis, the historian, archaeologist and broadcaster, and this is the Harbour Defence Motor Launch HMS Medusa, a very special vessel indeed. She's the last surviving vessel of her class, and she was the first Allied warship onto Omaha Beach during the D-Day landings. I'd love to tell you more, but I can't, because something very exciting is just about to begin. It's the National Historic Ships UK's 2021 Virtual Awards ceremony. So sit back and relax and enjoy some tales, inspiring tales of endeavour in the world of maritime heritage with our hosts, Hannah Cunliffe. She is director of National Historic Ships UK and the writer, broadcaster and lecturer, Paul Atterbury. Thank you, Sam. Hello, everyone. And thank you for joining us here at Boathouse 4 in Portsmouth Historic Dockyard as we announce the winners of our 2021 awards sponsored by Beckett Rankin and Winter & Co Marine. And we'll also be formally launching Boathouse 4 as one of the new hubs in our UK-wide Shipshape network, acting as our ambassadors in the South East and offering a range of supporting services and activities for vessels on the National Registers. Hannah and I visited the dockyard earlier in the summer to check out the facilities at Boathouse 4 and we even got a chance to get a float on some of the vessels in the collection. We'll be sharing some behind the scenes highlights with you during tonight's show. I don't know about you Paul, but one of my favourite parts of this event is always unveiling the photography competition champions. We're saving the best for last, but I've had a sneak preview and I can tell you it's going to be worth waiting for as there are some fantastic images once again. I've been on the judging panel for five years now and I'm always impressed not just by the quality but the variety of the images we receive. I'm really looking forward to announcing our winners. But before then, we've got a special welcome from someone who has become a pretty important new face in the dockyard. Hi everybody, my name's Hannah Prowse and I'm the new Chief Executive of the Portsmouth Naval Base Property Trust, which includes Boathouse 4 in its portfolio. I joined the Trust in April this year and hadn't been here very long before I realised what a great job it was going to be. One of my first official outings involved a visit to our new microbrewery at Priddy's Hard with transport there on board our recently restored landing craft Foxtrot 8. It really doesn't get much better than that. An early project for me was to bring Arthur Beale, the famous Chandler previously located on Shaftesbury Avenue for 150 years, to Portsmouth. It's great to have a new facility on site and we're encouraging vessels to collect their shop orders from our pontoons here in the dockyard. We'll also be offering discounted moorings for vessels on the register and I can't wait to see more of you here in the months ahead. The team and I at Boathouse 4 are delighted to be hosting this year's National Historic Ships Awards and to be launching the site as a ship shape network hub. I hope you enjoy this virtual visit and it gives you a sense of the wide-ranging skills and facilities we have on offer here, which we're really keen to make more accessible to the wider sector in future. Thanks very much, Hannah, and I'm sure there will be many vessel owners who can't wait for their first rummage at the new Arthur Beals. And when Paul and I visited Boathouse 4 earlier this summer, we not only had the pleasure of going out on some of the craft in the collection, we also took the opportunity to announce our flagship awards. Here I am on Vic 56, one of the more recent additions to the Boathouse 4 collection. Built in 1946 as an oil-burning steamer for carrying ammunition and still operational today, this seems like an eminently fitting place to reveal the first of this year's awards, Flagship of the Year. For this award, craft are chosen from the National Register of Historic Vessels to act as representatives of maritime heritage throughout the year. Awards can be made based on cruising programmes, visitor numbers, or ways of engaging the public, either in person or online. This year, in the wake of the pandemic, National Historic Ships particularly wanted to recognise the efforts historic vessels have made to bounce back in many different ways, and so decided to award a static, an operational, and a virtual flagship for 2021. Each flagship receives a broad pennant to fly at the masthead, a certificate and a small grant to help fund its activities. I'm pleased to announce that the Operational Flagship Award goes to the motor yacht Breda, located on the Thames, in recognition of her online presence, local Thames cruising programme and attendance at summer events including the Henley Traditional Boat Festival. Hi everyone, I'd like to thank National Historic Ships UK for awarding Breda the status of Operational Flagship of the Year 2021. 
thank you very much. It was very quickly evident and the simple repair we had envisaged turned into a full-blown restoration. Pretty much everything on Breda had to be rebuilt and we built everything exactly how she was with a couple of important changes. First of all, the two windows behind me at the aft were wooden panel and we turned them into windows to keep continuity of the view. And the uh, second thing that we changed is the layout. This aft area was the sleeping quarters. We turned it into the saloon. It was evident to me that a big room with huge windows were better for a saloon. And the forward part of the ship is now the sleeping quarters. We're now in the forward area. This used to be the saloon even with a, a wood burner uh, over there. We transformed this into a master cabin with a double bed, six foot long, and then twin cabin, and then a full wet room. We've designed this part of the boat in the style of the, uh, the period, 1931, so everything is art deco, pretty much to our uh, taste. So this is one of the additions we've made uh, to the ship. We've built a control position outside here on the upper deck it's much nicer and you get such a better view uh, driving along. The next award is for the static flagship of the year which goes to the Bark Glen Lee based in Glasgow for her public outreach and engagement activities, involvement in events including the Summer of Play and her visual presence as a backdrop to COP26. Built on the Clyde in 1896 and restored to her former glory by the Clyde Maritime Trust, the tall ship Glen Lee is an icon of the Glasgow skyline. After 15 trading voyages around the globe and a few decades as a training vessel for the Spanish Navy, she has finally returned to the Clyde as a museum ship, the only Clyde-built sailing ship afloat in the UK. Approaching her 125th birthday, Glen Lee needs constant care so she can tell her incredible story of life as a cargo ship to future generations. It's been a difficult year, but we are welcoming back old and new friends. From superstar shanty men to candlelit concerts, the tall ship is engaging, educating and entertaining once again. What we would really like to say is a huge thank you to the National Historic Ships family for recognising the importance of the tall ship Glen Lee to her hometown and to maritime history. The final flagship award is for virtual activities and goes to the Light Vessel 50 for her new online resources they have developed, which include a virtual tour, key stages one and two learning materials, and social media engagement. On behalf of the Royal Northumberland Yacht Club, I'd like to thank National Historic Ships for the award of the virtual flagship of 2021. The award does credit to the hard work of the friends of LV50. Over the past six years, they have uncovered the history of this 142-year-old vessel and communicated the multi-layered story to the people of the Northeast and wider afield. Thanks to this work, LV50 has become an important asset for the town of Blythe. Well, much about with 50 remained as she was at her launch in 1879, giving visitors a real insight into life aboard a Victorian lightship. As a way of reaching out to students and visitors that were unable to visit us during the COVID-19, we became more creative producing a virtual tour for school children of Key Stage 1 and 2. It was a pleasure to contribute to the Friends of LV50 in developing a virtual tour for schools. We met regularly through the various lockdowns to develop some fantastic curriculum relevant learning resources aimed at local primary school pupils. The Friends of LV50 are a passionate community focused group and I very much look forward to working with them in the future. Thanks Paul, great job on the flagship awards. Uh, I don't know if you're ready to go, I know you've been having a lot of fun on board here but I've actually got another treat lined up for you. How about a trip out on a motor gunboat that took part in the D-Day landing? Try to stop me, <laughs> but first there's one thing I must do. Let's pretend we're going on this vessel. Sounds good. Full ahead Chief Engineer. So Paul, here we are in the middle of the Boathouse 4 Memorial Fleet and Diggory, Diggory Rose, the boat keeper at Portsmouth Naval Base Property Trust. Mm -hmm. This is Paul. Great to meet you, Diggory. Now, you're standing by a wonderful vessel. Tell us all about it. 
Okay, so MGB 81 was built and designed and built in 1942 by the British Powerboat Company as a response to the Schnell boats which the Germans were operating um, in the channel. They were attacking our merchant fleets and um, so the, the Schnell boats uh, had, had the sway and the, and the motor gunboat was developed um, really to, to try and uh, um, even the odds a bit. Primarily they were built uh, or they were operated by uh, volunteer reservists who were often uh, sort of young men uh, formerly sportsmen, um, adventurers if you like, they, they didn't conform to the, to the classic image of the Royal Navy uh, and the motor gunboat was the perfect, uh, perfect weapon for them. Um, she was designed by George Selman uh, in response to an Admiralty specification for, for a high speed boat with a, with a heavy armament and you'll see on the foredeck she has a two pounder 40mm pom pom, uh, it was really quite a large machine gun for, for the era. Um, she had three Packard uh, 4M engines which uh, together developed uh, something in the region of 7,500 horsepower and gave her a speed of around about 40 knots. Um, she doesn't quite do that now. Um, she's a lot lighter than she was because she doesn't have any ammunition and the guns aren't real um, to save weight. Uh, but we still develop um, some in the region of 2,500 horsepower. We still do about 35 knots. Um, we use diesels these days because it's uh, less explosive. Um, 81's history is, is well recorded. Um, she had a relatively uh, active war. Um, she was attached to, to various gunboat flotillas, including Robert Hitchens' famous 8th gunboat flotilla. Um, she was variously based in Felixstowe and Dartmouth and everywhere in between. Uh, she was damaged just before D-Day but was, uh, was, was repaired in Poole and actually saw, saw action um, during, uh, during the events of the 6th of June and shortly afterwards. Um, by then she had been redesignated MTB416, so she had an MTB number, although she was never given torpedoes. Um, and after the war she was decommissioned, like many others, she became a houseboat. Uh, she was the houseboat Cresta and kept on the Hamble. Um, and a variety of people over the years have, uh, have taken her on, um, restored her, renewed um, various pieces. We're just the latest in a, in a long line of, of folk to, to do their bit. We, we acquired her as a, as a going concern, um, but she wasn't armed in those days, so our, our action has really been to sort of finish, finish her wartime appearance. Um, we like to say that these boats, you know, obviously they were built with public money, they were public property and it's uh, very, much, uh, very much in our interest to sort of keep these things in the public eye um, and we are just the latest custodian in, in a long line of people who've kept this vessel alive. Before we go back on shore, this historic landing craft seems like a very appropriate place to present the next award. This vessel, Hockstrot 8, took part in the Falklands conflict and recently underwent major conservation just like the craft of the, on the register, which qualify for the Martin Heighton Award. This award is now in its third year, having been created in memory of our late director, who was a passionate advocate for maritime heritage and responsible for the publication of our own guidance volumes on historic vessel conservation. The Martin Heighton Award is for a vessel project which closely embodies the National Historic Ships conservation principles. The lucky winner has their name engraved on a special trophy hand carved around a piece of timber from HMS Victory, Nelson's famous flagship at the Battle of Trafalgar which of course is here in Portsmouth Dockyard. This year the winner also gets to choose any of the short courses offered by the Boat Building Academy of Lyme Regis to a value of £750. Pounds. The 2021 Award for Excellence in Maritime Conservation goes to the Museum of the Royal Navy for their landing craft tank LCT 7074. Hello, my name's Nick Hewitt. I'm Head of Collections and Research for the National Museum of the Royal Navy and I'm very, very proud to have received this extraordinary award for um, our project to restore and open to the public LCT 7074. Um, 7074 is a, a really special ship. She is the last surviving tank landing craft to take part in the D-Day landings. Now, what does that mean? Well, there were 7,000 ships and vessels um, in the D-Day landings altogether. 800 of them were these very large tank landing craft and 7074 is the last one left. So to stand on her today, you get this extraordinary sense of the, of the scale and the drama of, of D-Day. Um, it's a project that's been very close to our hearts at the National Museum. Um, I've been personally involved since we refloated the ship from the bottom of Birkenhead Docks in 2014, um, when we were, I think it's fair to say, pushed quite hard by Martin Heighton, who had a very, very close 
personal connection to this project. He was a huge, passionate crusader for it. He nudged us in the right direction. He encouraged us all the way. Um, and actually, uh, as a personal memory, uh, I vividly recall, um, I was supposed to give a presentation about the refloat of the ship and the whole project to the Royal Institute of Naval Architects. And I couldn't do that because the timing turned out to be the day we refloated the ship. So Martin stepped in for me and delivered my, my paper, which was, just shows how close he was to this project. So it's a very, very proud day for, for all of us at the NMRN. It's been a seven year journey and we're thrilled to have been taking it alongside National Historic Ships. What a perfect day we had here back in August and such a great experience to actually get a float on some of the vessels in the collection. But now, Paul and I can't wait to go inside the boathouse and find out what goes on here. incredible building it is, Paul. Built in 1938, restored with the National Lottery Heritage Fund grants, and now home to the International Boat Building and Training College, IBTC Portsmouth, as well as to the remaining vessels in the Trust collection. And it's a free attraction mm. for the public who really get to experience traditional maritime skills in action. And of course, this section of the ceremony is all about skills. And facilities like this one, because now it's time to hear from the five organisations which have been asked to act as shipshape network hubs and ambassadors for national historic ships in their areas. And we set up the Shipshape Network back in 2010 as a means of regenerating traditional skills. And today the network focus is very much on the supporting infrastructure for historic vessels and on connecting all those with an interest in ship conservation across the sector. It's divided into eight key zones and promotes over a hundred external maritime projects. So the hub organisations will be acting as a nucleus in each area and helping us develop partnership opportunities. And I'm delighted to announce that the Shipshape Network Hub for Scotland is the Scottish Fisheries Museum. Welcome to the Scottish Fisheries Museum. We are honoured to be appointed Shipshape Scotland Hub As a nationally styled independent museum, uh, we have shore-based facilities, we have a large boat collection, and we operate two seagoing boats. Our extensive 
displays cover the full range of sea fisheries in Scotland and we have a very active programme of outreach, learning activities and opportunities for volunteers to get involved. Thank you for appointing us Ship Ship Scotland Hub and we look forward to seeing you soon. Next, it's the North with Windermere Jetty as the new hub. Windermere Jetty being a hub is fantastic for us. Um, it's a, a really good relationship where uh, both organisations can really play to their strengths. Um, National Historic Ships gives us an opportunity to present ourselves to the wider heritage sector and community. I guess for National Historic Ships it gives them access to you know, an internationally important collection of boats, the conservation practices and things that we're involved in and the operation of the boats on the lake. These two vessels reflect um, what we're about here at Windermere Jetty, uh, two different uh, historical periods. So this one a 1960s Albatross marine speedboat, uh, rather, you, you know, you could term it a best of British just after the Second World War. And then the vessel behind me in the rotating jig is an 1895 uh, steam launch, built in America but came over here uh, around about 1900. Vessels that date right back to 1780, right through to 1983. So it's a great collection and it gives a wealth of experience in different conservation approaches. Um, for different periods of vessels and, and for different uh, end routes, so some to go back on the water as operational vessels and some to be conserved for their fabric in the main exhibition gallery. We're learning so, so much about you know, how to operate and how to maintain it well and all the little you know, pitfalls and things that we've fallen into and, and that gives others the opportunity to learn some of that benefit from the experience of actually conserving but then operating. In the southwest, two hubs have been designated this year, each with a different skill set and facility to share. The SS Great Britain Trust and the Liner Barge CIC. Hello from the SS Great Britain in Bristol. We are delighted to be joining National Historic Ships as one of the ship-shaped hubs in the southwest, and we were really excited to join the National Network in June this year. We're really, really, really pleased to be working with heritage organisations, boat owners, craftsmen and local businesses as the hub develops over the coming years. The SS Great Britain Trust tells the amazing story of this ship and we have a research facility here uh, to enable research on maritime history and Isambard Kingdom Brunel. We've also got some brilliant facilities for conferences, so we hope to host meetings for the network here. We're also hoping to share the amazing amount of knowledge and expertise that the Trust's gained over the years, particularly in areas like conservation and also fundraising and running big venues, um, and also sharing the knowledge that people across the region have to everybody within the hub. Most importantly, we'll be helping connect everyone in the region through workshops, events and online, and we're really looking forward to meeting all of you in the near future. So don't forget to check out our page on the NHS Shipshape Network webpage. And from us, I hope everything goes really well at the award ceremony and we look forward to seeing you all in the future. Hello, I'm Barbara Bridgman from the Liner River Barge Community Interest Company. And I'm really pleased to welcome you here at Cremel in South East Cornwall where we are based. So I would like first of all to acknowledge our recognition from National Historic Ships as a ship shape hub from for the Southwest. And um, this is the certificate to prove our new status. And thank you very much for uh, acknowledging this as uh, it's really important for us to be able to be a hub in the southwest, above all for the area that we cover, the southeast Cornwall and the Plymouth Waterways. Um, 
We operate Lina, a Tema sailing barge originally built in 1896, rescued from the mud by a, a fantastic character, Charlie Force, and then eventually, after a, a long and difficult period, the Liner Community Interest Company was formed in 2016. So now it's five years that we have managed to rebuild Liner and put it back into an operational uh, status. Uh, so for us, being a hub means we can share our experience, we can share our um, uh, knowledge amongst the for what concerns the waterways area and uh, how to introduce new and a wider range of people to maritime heritage from the volunteering to the career development. It's really important to transmit these skills to the future generations or we will have no maritime heritage left to maintain. So for us, having line, a sailing line and being able to share our experience and best practice with all the other organisations it's a, a, a wonderful opportunity. Thank you very much for listening and uh, uh, enjoy your award ceremony. And finally, it's time to officially recognise Boathouse 4 as the hub for the South East. We're delighted to be working in partnership with National Historic Ships UK as a ship-shaped network hub for the South East. Here at Boathouse 4, we have a wonderful and varied collection of historic vessels in our care along with an amazing, dedicated team of staff and volunteers. Of course, we're also home to the International Boat Building Training College and so have a strong understanding of the skills that are necessary to support the conservation of our historic craft. As a hub, we're here to work with local vessel projects, businesses and enthusiasts by sharing knowledge and expertise, forging new partnerships and championing our local maritime heritage. We have a range of facilities to offer, including discounted moorings for registered vessels, our restaurant with amazing views of the harbour, and classrooms, which can be used as event spaces. Most recently, we've welcomed the famous Chandler Arthur Beale on site, which is a very exciting addition for us. We're very proud to be a ShipShape Network Hub and look forward to the exciting opportunities this new venture will bring for all of us. Thank you to all our new ShipShape Hubs and we look forward to working with the team at each site as we develop the network at a local level in the year ahead. And I'd like to move on now to our volunteer awards. These are run in partnership with our sponsors, the Marsh Charitable Trust. The Trust not only sponsors maritime heritage causes like ours, but also celebrates achievement across the wider heritage sector in the arts, social welfare and environmental conservation recognising the outstanding efforts of individuals and groups to causes they believe in. And we acknowledge both personal success and teamwork through these awards. And for the first time, we've extended nominations to include projects listed on the ShipShape Network, as well as vessels on the National Registers. And there were some fantastic entries for this year's group award, but the judges were particularly impressed by two nominations both of which demonstrated the huge effort made by teams to support their vessels during the pandemic and return to operation at the earliest possible opportunity. The Group Award for 2021 is therefore jointly presented to two organisations. Firstly, to a team which recognised the value of volunteering in combating isolation and developing wellbeing, and which delivers a bespoke learning experience for schools and I'm pleased to announce that the first Group Award winner is the crew of the Daniel Adamson Preservation Society. Our volunteers have no idea that we applied for this award because we applied in secret. So it's only going to be tonight at the award ceremony that they are going to know that they've won. And it's making us so proud that their incredible dedication to the Danny, to sharing her story and working with the groups within the community that may otherwise be excluded has been recognised. Everyone from the engine and boiler room crew, stewards, deck crew, galley team, bridge staff and the presentation team who take the Danny story to those who could not get to the Danny for whatever reason have embraced the transition from a restoration project to becoming well-being ambassadors and welcoming everyone to the People's Little Steamer, sharing their skills and knowledge and making sure the experience is all inclusive. Yes, we do do cruises. But we are so much more than that, thanks to our amazing volunteer crew. So thank you, Marsh Charitable Trust 
and National Historic Ships for recognising our amazing team. Thank you. And the second group award recognises a group who worked tirelessly during COVID-19 to make their organisation more resilient. This included website upgrades resulting in increased membership, the creation of a 50-50 lottery scheme raising £6,000 in revenue and a new online safety training course for volunteer crew. And the second group award prize goes to the volunteers and trustees of the Steamship Shield Hall Charity. Well, we're very uh, pleased to win the uh, uh, Marsh Award. Um, um, Shield has gone through a very difficult 18 months, two years, like, like, like any other organisation. Um, but we've not been resting back on our laurels and uh, just waiting for things to happen. We took the opportunity to uh, redefine the organisation. We applied to the Charity Commission and in almost record time we were awarded charitable status. Um, we've also gone from a, um, a, a small board of uh, directors, if you like, to a full board of trustees. And we have five new trustees on board. Um, one is, indeed is our, our new chairman, Captain John Rose, and he has been instrumental in driving uh, the development of the, of the charity and, uh, and the new structure for the organisation. And that in itself then led us to um, um, forming much stronger relationships with our, one of our main sponsors, Associated British Ports, and they have agreed to give us tenancy of a permanent berth tenancy in here in the dock in Southampton for the next 10 years. We can now develop further our business opportunities for alongside events, um, business meetings, conferences, uh, wedding parties, that kind of thing. Um, which again will help us develop more income to keep this beautiful old ship going. With the crew of the SS This year's Individual Marsh Volunteer Award is going to a person who's played an active part in an organisation since 1975, working on two historic vessels owned by a trust. Both as a volunteer skipper and a working group leader, he has contributed a huge amount of time and energy on a wide variety of tasks. Most recently replacing rotten deck timbers, making a new saddle chock from scratch, re-rigging and fitting a new diesel tank for the vessel's engine. So the Marsh Individual Volunteer winner for 2021 is Tim Jepson of the Thames Sailing Barge Trust. Thanks very much to the Marsh Charitable Trust for the award. Um, I've been involved with the sailing club for well, since 1975 and uh, when it was a sailing club it's now of course a charitable trust. Um, been involved looking after the Centaur on the maintenance side for the last 21 years and uh, I've been sailing as skipper since 1993 and prior to that sailing as mate. Um, it's uh, been quite a job keeping the barge going, she's 126 years old now and uh, but we do have a crew of trainees, volunteers to help out with the work, obviously some of it's quite heavy. Um, but it's been great fun, you know, it's not, um, it's not a job, we're volunteers and it's been, been good fun. And finally, for this year's Marsh Awards, I would like to announce a special prize to recognise a Shipshape Network project whose volunteer team has contributed over 10,000 hours during a three-year period to research, devise and complete the work required to keep the vessel operational. And this included undertaking the very difficult task of replacing all 80 screwed stay tubes on a coal-fired boiler using only traditional skills and no modern welding repair methods. So the Shipshape Network Marsh Award winner for 2021 is the ship's engineers of the Steam Tug Kern Preservation Society, with a Lifetime Achievement Certificate also going to Chris Hayes, the chief engineer and founder member of the group which saved Kern.
On behalf of the volunteers and members of the Steam Tub Kern Preservation Society, we're delighted to have received this award from National Historic Ships in recognition of the work that we've carried out on the boiler of the 1913 Steam Tub Kern. The work has involved the replacement of 60 stay tubes, all of which had to be screwed to, to fit in. Uh, we've had to make up special tooling and special gauges in order to enable this work to be carried out. And we've also recruited and trained a number of young volunteers, passing on our skills, as most of us are getting a little past our prime. Anyway, thank you once again for this award. We are really grateful to receive it. Thank you very much for my lifetime achievement. My name is Annie McCarthy and I'm Trust Manager at the Marsh Charitable Trust and I was part of the judging panel for this year's Marsh Awards. The Marsh Charitable Trust was founded in 1981 as a grant making body by our current chairman Brian Marsh. Since 1987 the Trust has developed an award scheme to provide recognition to those who work to improve the world we live in. Recipients of Marsh Awards are always people who make a difference by selflessly contributing their efforts to causes that they believe in. Our awards of National Historic Ships form part of a larger scheme of almost 100 awards that the Trust runs in partnership with external organisations, spanning across the areas of heritage, social welfare, the arts and conservation. The Marsh Awards for Historic Vessel Conservation have been running since 2011 and recognise individuals and groups of volunteers who are working to ensure the conservation and preservation of historic vessels. This year, we are pleased to have introduced a new category to recognise volunteers working on a project linked to the ShipShape Network. Judging this year's awards was not an easy task, as we had some really strong nominations in the mix a testament to the dedication and commitment of volunteers through what has been a challenging year. On behalf of the Marsh Charitable Trust, I would like to congratulate all of this year's winners. Thank you, Hannah and Annie. Some real dedication shown by the recipients of those awards to the vessels in their care. But now it's time for the highlight of tonight's ceremony, the National Photographic Awards. The first category I'm announcing is the People's Choice, Always popular and closely fought on Instagram, four finalists were chosen from the monthly winners and voted on by the public this autumn to determine the favourite who will receive a GoPro camera worth £300 thanks to our sponsor IBTC Lowestock. The winning image is The Boat at Thornham, taken by Gary Holford from Hales Owen, West Midlands. Good evening everybody. Uh, I'd just like to thank National Historic Ships for organising such a fabulous competition uh, and I hope you're all having a good evening. I'd just also like to thank my family for putting up with my regular interruptions of our holidays and walks for photo opportunities and finally I'd just like to thank everybody who voted for me. Enjoy the rest of the evening. Next we have the Classic Boat Award, kindly sponsored by the competition media partners Classic Boat Magazine. The art editor's favourite images were shortlisted for a final decision by me and my fellow judges, including the editor, Stefan Mayrick Hughes, and we were looking for a photograph that most closely fits the ethos of the magazine. This year, the highly commended Classic Boat Award goes to Ed Whiting from Dilton Marsh, Wiltshire, with the image on the deck of the Blue Peter. And the winner of the Classic Boat Award 2021 the recipient of a specially commissioned trophy and a subscription to the magazine is Sandy Miller from Chelmsford, Essex with the image Ethel Alice and Bessem Fleet, Moment of Beauty. Good evening everybody. I would just like to say that I'm absolutely delighted to win the Classic Boat Award. It means a great deal to me so thank you very much Classic Boat and National Historic Ships. Uh, one of the great things about the National Historic Ships photo competition is that it gives us all a chance to express our appreciation of these beautiful boats on our rivers, estuaries and coastal surroundings and I always enjoy seeing what everyone else comes up with. So I hope you all enjoy the images and thank you very much again. Have a great evening. When you look at this image titled Ethel Alice and the Besson Fleet Moment of Beauty you can't help but wonder if it's dawn or dusk, and if it's dawn, what time the photographer Sandy Miller had to set his alarm. Reflection shots like this are a staple of marine photography, but rarely, if ever, have we seen one 
as good as this. The sea is as flat as a mirror, which, together with the timing, must have taken some planning. The joy of this photo is, of course, the clarity of reflection of the Smax rigs in the water. But there's also some nice composition at play here, with the masts and their reflections converging as they near the horizon, giving the image a pleasing geometric aspect. It's a great photo, and not the first winner from Sandy Miller, who does such a great job year-round of documenting the working vessels of the Thames Estuary. The National Historic Ships Photography Competition has been running for over a decade and has seen a huge number of individual entrants during that time, as well as many who have contributed year after year. Part of its goal is to raise the profile of maritime heritage by reaching a wider audience. And for this reason, a Newcomer of the Year award has been introduced for the first time to encourage those who have never entered the competition before. However, the judges were so pleased with the quality of the entries for this category that they decided the award should go to not one, but two newcomers. They will both receive the prize of a trip out on a historic vessel. And the first joint winner of the Newcomer Award is Raymond Carruthers from Calais and Stirlingshire with the image Ebb and Flow. I was delighted to find out that I'd been awarded joint winner of the Newcomer category for the National Historic Ships UK Awards for 2021. This image was taken towards the end of August this year at Loch Ruskey in Stirlingshire, not far from where I live. Uh, it's a favourite location of mine and I'm frequently rewarded uh, with lovely conditions, uh, with mist and great light. Thanks very much again for this award, much appreciated. The second joint winner of the Newcomer Award is Kaljit Athwell from Broughty Ferry Dundee with the image, the RRS Discovery, Orion and the v &A. Hi there. Uh, I'm so happy to receive this award from National Historic Ships UK uh, as part of their annual photography competition. Um, a joint winner for their newcomer category uh, for my image of the RRS Discovery, the v and Museum and the Constellation of Orion, which I shot recently in Dundee. Uh, I want to give a massive thank you to National Historic Ships for running the competition and also to the judges who no doubt will have had an exceptionally difficult time uh, judging these, uh, these images. Um, I want to say thank you actually to National Historic Ships UK and organisations such as Dundee Heritage Trust who look after the RRS Discovery for the work that they do uh, to safeguard some of these magnificent vessels that you can find up and down the country for us to enjoy. Um, and as a proud Dundonian, uh, it makes me really, really happy uh, to get one of my images of Dundee's rich maritime history recognised in this way. So yeah, thank you so much. I um, can't wait to show this off and tell everyone and hopefully see some of you uh, at some point in the future. Thank you. It's always hard being on the judging panel because there are so many unusual and imaginative shots to choose from. And this year was no exception. After much discussion, we selected 12 images for inclusion in the 2022 National Historic Ships calendar. January, A Dawn of Better Times by Jan Warsop. February, P.S. Waverley Catching the Evening Sun by Russell Anley. March, Telegraph BN122 Autumn Light by Sandy Miller. April, The Chieftain Finally Back in the Water by David Stern. May, The Boat at Thornham by Gary Holford. June, the 1923 schooner Columbia by Ed Whiting. July, Coal Boat Roach at Tipton, Birmingham Canal Navigations by Kev Maslin. August, Edme Off Stone Point, East Mersey by Seamus Masters. September, Morning Calm Came Slowly by, by Tam Preston. October, Danny on the Weaver by John Ayres. November, Morning Merit by Fraser Gray. December, the RRS Discovery, Orion and the v a by Kuljit Athwar. One image from over 400 entries has been chosen as the overall winner, the judge's favourite, which will be pub published on the front cover of the calendar, as well as scooping tonight's top prize, £500 of vouchers, thanks to sponsor Axis 12 and a classic smock from Yarmouth Oil Skills. But first, I particularly wanted to commend the runner-up, 
who has been awarded a very well-deserved second place. The highly commended award for 2021 goes to John Ayres from Warrington, Cheshire, with the image Danny on the Weaver. And now, it's the moment you've all been waiting for, the National Historic Ships UK Photographer of the Year 2021. We felt this image captured the theme of Back to the Water perfectly, with a vessel under sail and several others waiting to join it. The striking light and silhouetted craft make the photo stand out, and so I am delighted to announce that the overall winner of tonight's photographic awards is Fraser Gray from Gravesend, Kent, with Thames Sailing Barges. Hello, I'm speaking from the deck of LV21 here in Gravesend. I would like to thank the National Historic Ships team, judges and the photographic competition sponsors Axis 12 and Yarmouth Oil Skins for this quite unexpected honour. I hope my photograph of the Thames sailing barges at Gravesend Town Pier and the images of my fellow photographers will promote and encourage an interest and enjoyment of our rich and diverse maritime and nautical history. This is a tremendous encouragement for me in my photography Thank you again for this generous award. As always, it was a huge privilege to be judging the National Historic Ships Photo Competition and the judges and myself absolutely loved everyone's entrance. So a massive thank you for everyone who um, entered their photos into the competition. The one that the judges and myself were particularly drawn to was the Thames Sailing Barges at Dawn photo, which is absolutely amazing. One of the main reasons why we loved this picture was the brilliant way that the photographer captured the morning light. As so many of us know, um, as the sun comes up on the water, you get this incredibly warm, kind of yellow glow, which kind of spreads across the water. Uh, and the photographer so wonderfully captured this. Um, so that's one of the main reasons why we loved it. Another brilliant thing is the way that he, the way that the barges reflect on the water. You know, to the left of the photo, you've got the sailing barge Blue Mermaid just setting sail and the top sail reflecting on the water. And then to the right of the photo, you've got all the barges rafted up and their spreets reflecting on the water, which is absolutely fantastic. So a wonderful photo and an incredibly worthy winner of the National Historic Ships Photo Competition this year. So that brings us to the end of tonight's awards some very worthy winners and unforgettable images which I look forward to enjoying throughout the year by the National Historic Ships calendar. And it's time to say a big thank you to Paul and all our judges for their time and expertise as well as to our sponsors for their generosity in supporting these awards and of course to our host the Portsmouth Naval Base Property Trust who have so kindly opened up this site for filming. And as you can imagine, events like this don't happen without a whole lot of hard work behind the scenes. So I'd also like to thank our long-term partners, the Marsh Charitable Trust and Classic Boat Magazine, our presenters, Sam Willis and Paul Atterbury, Ash Productions, the members of my own team, and of course, our core funders, the Department of Digital, Culture, Media and Sport. It only remains to thank you all for watching and taking part in our tour of Boathouse 4. I hope you've enjoyed the evening. And please do join us again next year when we'll be looking for another group of winners to help us celebrate maritime heritage once again. Well, that's it, the show's over, but if it's left you wanting more, do please stay online and check out the shortlisted entries for the fantastic annual photographic competition. Or join us on social media to carry on the chat and congratulate the winners. I'd like to thank our hosts, Hannah and Paul, and also the great team at National Historic Ships UK for their tireless work to put this event together. We well, thank you very much for watching and have a great night.